Good morning. Happy Sunday, everybody. Come on in. Have a seat. Get your tea. Get your coffee. Happy Sunday, everybody. How are you? Say hello when you get here if you want to. Oh, it's one of those good tea days. This is a cup that was sent to me from a friend in Oregon. Oregon. I imagine those are uh, Dungeness crab, which they're famous for. Anyway, hope everybody is well. I uh, heard from one or two of you that can't make it this Sunday or this morning live, but you can catch us later. That's the beauty of this online church, right? Come now or come later, and we're still here. So grab a seat. Grab your coffee. We got a couple minutes here before the sermon starts. I'm glad to have you here. Nice to see you. I see some of you are here. You can sit quietly. That's okay. Thanks for coming. I am um, back from Texas. I had a quick trip in and out of Dallas and met Aaron's family, his mom and his sister, very nice ladies, and um, had a nice, nice visit. Went picking and uh, got back in time to do church. So... Thanking God for a safe trip there and back, and hoping everybody here is fine. I'll be headed out on the 28th, heading to Detroit next for my class reunion on the 30th of September. And then the Sunday of that weekend, um, I think it's October 2nd, Sunday, October 2nd, we will be having church in Wyandotte, Michigan at Bishop Park at noon and so that will bump church back for one hour um, it'll be nine o'clock in Arizona so an hour earlier for wherever you happen to be tune in that Sunday an hour earlier for a live Facebook live from Bishop Park in Wyandotte Michigan here's my map Wyandotte's down here down river that's where I will be for my class reunion, and I'm looking forward to seeing my friends from school and my family that live there, and uh, it's going to be a good, good time. Uh, please keep me in your prayers for safe travels, and then on my way home, I'm going to see my friend Elma in Chicago. I had a layover anyway, so why not just jump off the plane and catch another one a day and a half later. So I'm thanking God that that's all able to happen. He is so good to us, isn't he? He lets things happen. So happy Sunday, everybody. I am going to real quick share this to our group page. There we go, because I'm not sure if Gary's here or not and that is one Sunday's message and um, appreciate everybody tuning in um, I like hearing the stories of what people do while, while they're at church and isn't that the beauty of online church you can do what you need to do or just sit and relax and get the message and um, it makes it nice but I will be scheduling a church in the park here in Arizona in October or the beginning of November I'm not quite sure when it depends on the availability of the place and lining up some music so tell your friends in Michigan come on down to Bishop Park for Cowboy Church in the park in Wyandotte Michigan at Bishop Park at noon on Sunday October 2nd anyways come on in grab a seat we're gonna be getting going here with the joke of the day right after announcements right after I post this on our church pages that is um, 
Anyway, let me see one more page. Go to our AJ Cowboy Church. Right there. Good morning, everybody. I see I have some comments. Who's here? Who's here? Who's here? <laughs> Gary Max is watching but can't talk. Jeff, yes, TSA let me go. Can you believe that? I was randomly picked at the airport. It happens more often than not for me. Either they pick me or they see something on the outside right of my knee, of my right knee. It shows up every single time I have half a mind to go and get an x-ray and see if there's something on my knee. But yes, good morning, Joy. Good morning, Joy. Good morning, Gary. Gary shared all over. Thank you. Yeah, so anyway, that is crazy, Jeff. TSA, they just randomly picked and the security agent said, well, if you would have let him go in front of you, he'd be standing here. And poor Aaron's standing over there going, what's going on? I said, they're waiting. I had a mask. I wore a mask through the airport and on the plane. I don't need to be catching anything. And I kind of like the idea of being safe. But anyway, yeah, I'm such a uh, mean looking uh, villain that they picked me. <laughs> Good morning, Luann. How are you? How's that cute little grandson of yours? Thank you for coming to church. And Joy. We got uh, Joyful Martin is my friend here. And in January, we are doing the blessing of the horses again. Picking that up. We did it, I think, what, four or five years. And then COVID hit. And we didn't have uh, blessing of the horses. But we decided to go for it so in January watch for the announcements I will be blessing the horses at Mammoth at the ghost town at the Mammoth and all are welcome to come down bring a can of food for our food drive that we do and um, anyway somebody saying they can't find church well then I guess He'll have to keep looking. Let me see if I could send him a link. I don't know. Um, but anyway, Blessing of the Horses is going to happen again in January. Thank you, Joy, for coordinating all that. Joy is always on the back of her horse, and he is a pretty cool horse. So watch for that as well. And let me see. Sorry, one other thing there there in a minute all right let's see oh I also wanted to let you know we received a real nice thank you note from the family of Barbara Bauer who passed away um, a few weeks ago they had her funeral service and we sent flowers and they sent a nice thank you note thank you so much for your love and support our parents have always spoken so highly of you thank you for being there for them we're truly blessed to have you in our lives love the bowers and it's for pastor cheryl and aj cowboy church thank you to the bowers barbara was such a special lady and i know exactly we all know exactly where barbara is she was with the lord right now and thank you for the thank you note we did receive it and the other thing I wanted to show you is like a little show and tell today um, we spoke last week of tame thy tongue and I preached it a few years ago and a lady in church that makes jewelry made this lovely bracelet for me that says tame thy tongue and I know a lot of time went into this thank you Donna who made it for me isn't that lovely um, I have to get it fixed one of the magnets fell out and if you put a magnet in, in backwards um, it clicks backwards but it's not secure so I don't want to lose this so I'm gonna get this fixed and uh, start wearing it again it's a good reminder to tame thy tongue what did we say last week 
before you say anything, ask yourself, is it true? Is it, is it kind? What was the third one? Ask yourself before you say it, is it true? Is it necessary? Is it kind? So I hope that stuck with you and you had a good week. Anyway, um, that's about it for the announcements. Oh, one more. I think Steve is here and it was kind of cool. Um, Aaron and I have a little joke. How far do we have to go before we can go somewhere and somebody does not know me? Somebody isn't there that knows me. And we laughed when I got to Texas. I had two messages from two members of the church asking, where are you? I'm in Texas. <laughs> and Texas is a big state. We had Steve Bondi, who's in Stephenville. He was a mere two hour, two and a half hour drive away. And Chad, who also attends church, Asked, where are you? I'm, I, I forget the town he was in, but he was about a four-hour drive away, or his son, who is the exalted ruler of the Elks Lodge down there. And um, Aaron got a good laugh out of that. Well, here we are in Texas, and there's people wanting to see Cheryl that live in Texas. So, maybe next time I go to Texas, we'll have to arrange a cowboy church in Texas. How cool will that be? And Steve and Chad will meet up somewhere that's convenient for everybody. And it will be a great time, wouldn't it? So thanks for saying hello while I was in Texas. That was pretty dang cool, if I do say so myself. Thank you for saying hello. So, anyway, who do we have here? Check these little comments. Good morning, Steve Bondi. I see you. Um, and um, anyway, I wanted to check my messages. I have Max messaging, who's usually here. Poor Max is in Facebook jail. So uh, anyway, she won't be at church today, but trust me, she's with us. She's messaging me her comments to me, Max. I'll check your comments after church getting near time for the joke of the day um i had a couple left over from last week of the little riddles that i found and so i'm gonna dive into the joke of the day please share this message by the way if you're listening we are looking to save lost souls and um it's nice to be back in Arizona. It's nice to be back from my sabbatical. And it's nice to have all of you here today. So here's one little joke of the day. If Mary had Jesus and Jesus was a little lamb, does that mean Mary had a little lamb? <laughs> Could mean Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> Now I wonder if that's why that little song was made. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> and I want to wish a happy birthday to those of you who are celebrating a birth today. I know it's somebody's birthday that comes to church. And if I don't write it, up, write it down, but happy birthday to you. And we had a couple birthdays last week. Happy birthday to you all. All right. Pharaoh's daughter went down to the bank of the Nile and drew out a little prophet. It'll, you'll get it in a minute. Pharaoh's daughter, remember, she found Moses in the Nile. And he was certainly a prophet. I'm going to go on to a regular joke now, okay? <laughs> All right, somebody got it. Thank you very much. I don't know. It's kind of hard telling a joke in a room by yourself, not hearing the laughter. That is why I laugh. So here's your real joke of the day, folks. A large, well-established Canadian lumber, lumber camp advertised they were looking for a good lumberjack. The very next day, a skinny little man showed up at the camp with his axe 
and knocked on the head lumberjack's door. The head lumberjack took one look at the little man and said, Get out of here. Just give me a chance to show you what I can do, said the skinny man. Okay, you see that giant redwood over there? Take your axe and go cut it down. The skinny man headed for the tree, and in five minutes he was back knocking on the lumberjack's door. I cut the tree down, said the man. The lumberjack couldn't believe his eyes and said, Where did you get the skill to chop down trees like that? In the Sahara forest, replied the puny man. You mean the Sahara desert, said the lumberjack. The little man laughed and answered back, Oh, sure, that's what they call it now. <laughs> All right, that's it, that's it, that's it. There's your joke of the day, everybody. I'll let you, ah, somebody liked it, thank you very much. All right, glad you liked it. Go ahead and use it if you want to. Let me settle down here. And I'm going to ask you now to open your hearts and clear your minds to receive God's message. Dear Lord, you are an awesome God, and we thank you for all you have given us. We can hardly look around and not see the wonder of your majesty. We ask your guidance in our daily lives so we live the way you want us to live. We ask blessings on those here in your word today. And we ask for you, Lord, to touch our leaders' hearts that they lead in the way you want them to lead, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 So, with that, I am now going to go into the sermon. Matthew 7.1 Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For God will judge you as you judge others. The measure you give will be the measure you get back. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged, which is what? The measure you give will be the measure you get back. That is what that means. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. So, this scripture is the continuation of the Beatitudes, which we did study the Beatitudes a few weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago. And the Beatitudes, and I'll just Say them real quick. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then Jesus went into this. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For God will judge you as you judge us others, and the measure you give will be the measure you get back. 
That day, um, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus gave the longest dissertation, the longest sermon ever of his whole time, and it covered a whole bunch of important topics. And this story has two meanings to it, actually. Um, the first, of course, is attacking the hypocrisy of those who criticize others while ignoring their own much larger flaws um, or their sins or the things they do wrong. They ignore their own, but they sure have a lot to say about other people. And since the flaw is in the eye in this scripture, it is also a metaphor for how such flaws can blind a person. You, you can be blinded, you can see something that somebody else does that is so obviously wrong in your eyes, but you could not, you cannot see the flaws in your own life. You are blind to your own flaws and misgivings, but boy, can you point out other people's, huh? So what you need to know is that no mercy will be shown from God to the reputation of those that show no mercy to the reputation of others. This is not the worst of it. You shall also be judged by God and receive greater condemnation. But if we are modest and charitable in our criticism of others, and do not judge them, and judge only ourselves, we will not be judged by God. God believes in what you do is how he will treat you. What you do to others, God will do unto you. God will forgive those that forgive their brothers, so he will not judge those that don't judge their brothers, the merciful will find mercy. Now every person going to the gates will be judged. And if you live a good life and mind your own business and you don't judge others, that goes in your favor. God's not going to judge you as harshly because you are forgiving of others you minded your own business. You know that they'll be judged by God, so you let them be. Okay? It is an ev evidence, Matthew Henry's commentary says, it is an evidence of humility, charity, and humble submission and respect to God and shall be re rewarded by him accordingly when you do not when you judge others, when you treat others the way you want to be treated. You know, everything really just lines up in the scripture, doesn't it? It just does. The judging of those that judge others is according to the law of retaliation, which is judge yourself first, then lovingly forgive and help your neighbor. Here we say, why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? Why say, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye? It's just a little speck, but you, my friend, have a log in your own eye which you need to address, right? What would become of us if God should be as exact and severe in judging us as we are in judging our brothers and sisters. If we should be weighed, if he should weigh us on the same balance as we do others, we may just expect it if we, if we do wrong, then we need to ask forgiveness for ourselves before we tell our neighbor, hey, by doing that, you're doing something wrong and you need to go to God 
and ask forgiveness or you need to stop doing what you're doing because it's so wrong. You need to stop partying till all hours of the night or you need to stop being mean to your child. Well, first make sure your own affairs are in order before you do something like that. Do not judge. We are all sinners. When we point out other specks, are we overlooking our own sin? Remember your own log when you feel like criticizing and you may find you have less to say. Judge yourself first, then lovingly forgive and help your neighbor. For no mercy will be shown to the reputation of those who show no mercy to the reputation of others. The gossip. What other people do is really none of your business. And James tells us, James 4.11, Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. And only the Lord is in a position to judge. And do you think you can really fill those, sa those sandals? Don't let yourself get dragged into a gossip fest or t of tearing down a person or their behavior. Stand up for your friends and, you know, walk away from it if you have to. Just keep your mouth shut, move away, and let them do what they do, and they will be judged. They will be judged what they do. What you do unto others will have done unto you. And when you are about to criticize someone, remember the law of love. Love others as I have loved you. And say something encouraging instead. You like that when people do that to you, right? If people are talking about your friend, tell them, hey, that's my friend and I don't appreciate you talking that way about them. They're doing the best they can. What about you? What about that log in your eye? And you don't even want to point out, although you have a story, you can put them in their place. You're bringing yourself down to their level and you're judging and you're criticizing and we can't do that. Um, practice saying nice things every chance you get and be sincere. When you say something that is beneficial to others, it will cure you of finding fault and your ability to obey the law of love will increase. The more you say and do nice things, the more naturally it's going to come to you to say nice things rather than, than gossiping. You know, even if, if it, I don't even want to make examples. You know how people are. And in Peter, 1 Peter 2.11, he tells us, Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors, then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior. People should know that you're a believer simply by your actions. Your reputation precedes you. Keep it clean so as not to be embarrassed or have to hang your head in shame on your judgment day. And others' judgment day is none of your business. But maybe you'll find a little peace in knowing that everyone will be judged. So mind your own business and watch what you say. Watch that log in your own eye is basically what judge this whole message is about. Do not judge others and you will not be judged. <clears throat> we are temporary visitors here. Because our real home is in heaven where God lives. We Christians, as Christians, must live differently 
than unbelievers. Otherwise, what is, what is the use? What is the sense of having believers and unbelievers if you can't see a difference in the true, in the two, right? Because I have no people who are non-believers that are very kind, that are very loving, that are not judgmental, but they do not have Jesus in their hearts. But you wouldn't know it until you ask them. So live the example and bring people into the fold. Ask them to church send them church how easy is it now to go to church when it's right there on facebook where you hang out all the time anyway you have people popping in and out watching a little bit watching it later watching it while they're cleaning house but we need to act as christians do not let secular society Secular society is not spiritual non-believers. Do not let secular society dictate how we are to treat others. There's so much division right now in this world. And we need to make sure to choose our side and stay there. No fence sitting allowed. Don't let culture influence your behavior. There's places on this earth where you could go and everything is acceptable no matter how evil it is. Don't go there. Even though you're there and everybody says it's cool, you can do it. If your gut tells you, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Just because it's okay, don't mean it's okay. And, but, of course, we are not the final judge. We choose what we do. We make our choices, and God judges. So always remember you're a Christian, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and act accordingly because you just don't know who is going to be watching, who is going to be seeing you and saying, and look, there's Pastor Cheryl over there partying like an animal. What kind of preacher is that? Well, I try to behave all the time. I try to watch my mouth all the time. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. It's no big deal to be a good person. Just do what is right and follow your gut. At all times, no matter where you are, just keep in mind that you're a Christian, a representative, if you will, of God. Your faith must express yourself in your actions. Help whenever you can. Actions speak louder than words. Do you know, do you know certain people that no matter what it is, no matter when you need help, you know who to call because they're always available for help those are wonderful people and those are your go-to people so be one of those be one of those people that you can go to and um, live a good life just just don't judge others mind your own business and in Romans we hear the dangers of criticism and I love this. Accept other believers who are weak in faith and don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. For instance, one person believes it's all right to eat anything, but another believer with a sensitive conscience will only eat vegetables. Those who feel free to eat anything must not look down on those who don't. And those who don't eat certain foods must not condemn those who do, for God has accepted them. So why do you condemn another believer? Why do you look down on another believer? Remember, we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For the scripture says, As surely as I live, 
Every knee will bend to me and every tongue will declare allegiance to God. Yes, each of us will give a personal account to God, so let's stop condemning each other. Decide instead to live in such a way that you will not cause another believer to stumble and fall. You may believe there's nothing wrong with what you're doing, but keep it between yourself and God. Blessed are those who don't feel guilty for doing something they have decided is right. But if you have doubts about whether or not you should eat something, you are sinning if you go ahead and do it, for you are not following your convictions. If you do anything you believe is not right, you are sinning. And that is from the book of Romans. So it is, isn't it amazing how something written so long ago applies to today? There's a lot of people that will not eat meat. There's a lot of people that will only eat vegetables. So fine, do that. Just eat what you want to eat and leave the rest of us alone. If we want to have a steak every now and then, okay. If we only want to eat salad, okay. Right? But don't force your beliefs on us and we will not talk to you and force our beliefs on you. Do what you feel is right. But if you do anything you believe is not right, it's a sin. So why do it? And in everything you do, love. We are to love others and not judge. Luke tells us, 637, do not judge others and you will not be judged. Do not condemn others or it will all come back against you Forgive others and you will be forgiven. A forgiving spirit shows that we have received God's forgiveness. And we know when we pray the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Right? Be forgiving. Don't be condemning. Don't be judgmental. Do not judge others and you will not be judged. The measure you give will be the measure you get back. A forgiving spirit shows that we have received God's forgiveness. Seek to please God who sees everything in secret. You can't hide anything from God. We must Abandon concern for the approval of man and learn to care only for the approval of God. We must not step up on God's throne and judge the hearts of others or judge how they will be judged by God. But they will be judged and so will each and every one of us. Christians who develop a loving, forgiving Christian lifestyle will experience the presence and power of God. And remember that you do have to judge yourself first, then help your neighbor, okay? So if you don't judge, God's gonna appreciate it and you will be rewarded. Everything is on a scale, right? So put the good side of the scale in your favor and live as a good Christian. Let people know you're a Christian just by the way you live and let your reputation precede you and be proud of it. And don't let others condemn others in front of you. Don't join in the gossip fest, okay? Tame thy tongue and watch what you say. And then you too will have a happily ever after with God on your judgment day for you will be judged accordingly okay and I ask you now to join the Christian family if you are not 
a Christian, if you do not believe in God, I ask you right now to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior so that you too can have eternity in the kingdom of heaven. Ask forgiveness of your sins if you're not quite sure what a sin is. Ask Jesus to lay it on your heart what your faults are and ask forgiveness and go and sin no more. This is all we ask of you is to join the Christian family, learn the Christian lifestyle, and be a member of God's family and help others become a member of God's family. Can you do that? We would love to have you in our family. All are welcome. All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is the key and repent and go and sin no more. Amen? And we're going to pray exactly for that right now. We're going to pray in our prayer circle. And this is our prayer circle. This is where we come and lay our request at the feet of the Lord and give thanks for answered prayers. Dear Lord, we thank you for bringing peace and calm back to the world and helping us to get through this COVID and all the horror that we lived through in the last two years. Thank you for that, Lord. We pray for those who are battling cancer. We pray for those who are in the hospital suffering any illness. Lord, we pray for those who live in the home of an abuser. Please touch the heart of the abuser that they knock it off, Lord, and keep those being abused safe. And for all those things that lie silent in our hearts, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And so, if you have any prayer requests, please feel free. You can post them here. You can post them on our prayer request or feel free to message me. And we will all be praying for you anytime, okay? So now let's join hands and pray the Lord's Prayer together. Okay, are you ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. 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 So everybody, I hope you have a great week. I look forward to church again next week. Good morning, Franny. Good morning, Lori. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, Keo. Good morning, Beth. Now that I'm here seeing you all. Thank you for coming to church, Christy and Keo and Franny. Hope you're doing well. I look forward to church again next week. And the week after that, I'll be in Detroit doing church in the park. And why not? Hope to see some of you there. Looking forward to the class reunion too. But thank you for coming to church. God bless you. Have a great week. And remember... If you get down on Saturday night, you still got to get up for church on Sunday morning. God bless you all. Take care. Please share this message. Let's bring in a lost soul for all of you. Good morning, Jess. Happy Sunday. Anyways, good to see you. I'm glad you came to church. Have a great week. And remember, do not judge and you will not be judged. Bye-bye. Take care. God bless. Please share this message.